everybody, it's Christina Holloway here. Welcome back to my channel. Today, we're going to talk about dealing with conflict at work and how to prepare a toolkit that will help you rise above some of the petty nonsense that happens around you at work. Also, this year I'm sharing 12 leadership metrics that will help you succeed in your career. This is pretty much a full framework for how to develop your skills to build your career. This month, we're talking about managing conflict at work. You can catch up on all of the videos in the playlists on my YouTube channel. Everything is linked below in the description. Make sure to check it out. Real quick, if you enjoy this content and want to learn more about how to make power moves in your career, make sure to follow my channel and hit the notification bell so you never miss a video from me. All right, so let's get started. Number one, identify conflict resolution guidelines. Conflict resolution is about having the courage to have difficult conversations, intervening when relationships aren't working, and supporting others to help them deal with conflict at work. To me, in my opinion, this is the foundation for how we can approach conflict so that it becomes something we handle instead of something we just have to deal with. It's definitely learned behavior. This is a skill you can develop and get quite good at the more you practice it. So that's clear, but also vague. It's a great foundation for understanding where you should manage conflict, but layered above that foundation, we have to figure out some guiding principles. This helps you understand what actions you can take to start building this uncomfortable but necessary skill. This is one more thing you can add to your communication toolkit. You can create some guidelines for yourself so that you understand, you know, the rules of engagement, so to speak. Examples of guidelines you can set for yourself include uh, treating people with respect and equality, even if it's just in your mind. <laughs> you get to create a mindset for yourself that mutual respect is important. If it's not there, then maybe conflict resolution cannot happen in that moment. And that's your boundary and that's okay. Active listening, which is something you can practice it's not difficult and you can use it on a daily basis until you start to feel it become um, an automatic skill instead of one you need to practice. And I'm going to talk about that next. Using empathy as a way to de-escalate. Remember, empathy is not the same as sympathy. You don't feel sorry for the person. You understand where they're coming from. Once you find empathy, you can create a path forward or not. It depends on the situation, but it's for you to determine. Defining what collaboration looks like to you. Figure out what a win-win would look like for you and ask the other person to meet you there. If that's not possible, then you can consider what to do next. Remember also that you wanna use the word collaborate instead of negotiate or compromise. Negotiating and compromising give the impression that either one of you needs to give something up and that sends a wrong message. Collaboration is more likely to get a positive response as a way for both of you to win. Establishing ground rules. You get to define this as well. If you expect to have a conversation with me, please understand this. I will not engage in a conversation with anyone who uses name calling or interrupting to get their point across. As soon as that starts, I'll need to leave the conversation. That's a boundary as well as a ground rule for interacting with you. Number two, practice active listening. Like I said, active listening is something you can start using immediately and you'll see a shift in the way you communicate, but also a shift in the way that you're being heard by other people. A good example of basic active listening sounds like this. Let me make sure I understood you. I'll just repeat what you said. It's the ability to stay in the moment during a conversation and making sure the other person feels heard. But there are other ways to use active listening. There are nonverbal cues like making eye contact and using body language like leaning in or actually looking like you're interested in talking to the person. In terms of interacting with them, like I mentioned, you can paraphrase what the person just said or even summarize the point they're trying to make. How is this helpful? Well, if it's a contentious conversation, it creates neutrality and it illustrates that you're trying to understand their point of view. That by itself can go a long way to helping take any anger and hostility out of a problematic conversation. The other two elements of active listening include empathy and avoiding interruption. This can be as simple as saying, I'm following you so far, I'm listening. That must have been hard, then what did you do? Remember, 
Active listening is a broad set of skills. You can get started by literally just making more eye contact and appearing with a neutral expression on your face that welcomes a different um, or conflicting perspective. From there, move into your communication statements that help you keep control of the tone of the conversation. Number three, understand the role of mindfulness. It's simple. Mindfulness involves being aware of the other person's feelings in the moment without judgment. If you're just trying to figure this out, then my advice to you is do the best you can. You can manage conflict using mindfulness by increasing your emotional awareness. Why am I suddenly feeling this surge of rage? Let me hold on to that for a minute. Reducing your self-centeredness. This is clearly a personal attack, or is it? And fostering connection. Let's see if we can meet in the middle somewhere. Mindfulness after a disagreement or conflict is also important. It's the difference between saying, wow, that didn't go well, I wonder what's going on with him, versus what did I do wrong and how could I have fixed this? Ladies, don't internalize conflict. I'm saying it plain and simple but we know it isn't easy. Women don't usually shake off conflict. So mindfulness here is about having a problematic conversation and understanding that for the most part, it's not personal, but more importantly, you just can't take it personally. Even with the name calling and the insults, that behavior isn't about you. The same goes for men, but I find that men spend time dealing with problems and women spend time trying to solve problems. And many times they're not your problems to solve. Mindfulness helps you deal with what's in front of you instead of internalizing it and turning it into your problem to own or fix. Number four, seek emotional intelligence training. Any effective conflict resolution toolkit should include emotional intelligence training. Here's why. Emotional intelligence is about our ability to perceive, express, and regulate emotion. If you've ever been on the receiving end of someone who is out of control angry over the simplest thing, then you know where emotional intelligence begins. <laughs> Knowing that there are people out there who have no control over their emotions and emotional well-being, it's, well, it's hard. It's hard to walk into a room or a meeting and have to deal with an emotionally immature, unrefined person, especially when it's about big projects or deliverables where there's no room for that. You can't control other people. And as many times as I get clients who tell me, you know who could really use some coaching, my unhinged boss, that's who. <laughs> All we can really control is how we respond to situations. Emotional intelligence is going to help with that. I had a client today who wanted to talk about how to make changes to a toxic culture. He's in a great position to create a positive work environment that's anchored on celebrating wins, encouragement, and positivity. The problem for him is how to set boundaries upward by managing his leadership team, people who are stuck in the old ways. That's not easy, and having a conflict resolution toolkit that helps you prepare for difficult conversations with people who have more authority than you do will help you keep a level head in those conversations because here, you're seeking out conflict to make a point. Look for training that teaches you how to overcome triggers, um, deflect baiting behavior, and rise above petty remarks. There are online training programs that are inexpensive. Udemy and LinkedIn have introductory courses. There are books, lots and lots of books. <laughs> there are plenty of articles online that can help you create a toolkit of resources for yourself to be successful here. Number five, know what to include with documentation. To this point, we've talked about ways you can prepare yourself to be the best version of your leadership style as you navigate difficult conversations and deal with conflict, mild conflict to serious conflict. We've even talked about how to prepare to deal with someone above you who could be causing problems for you. At some point, you are going to run into someone who causes you chronic conflict, a person who is always combative with you, and you'll use the resources in your toolkit to do your best to stay professional. Eventually, you'll need to start documenting problematic conflict. In order to prepare for this, you'll need to understand two things. One, documenting the problem may not be enough, and two, it may not get you the results you wanted. Documenting the problem is a pretty simple and straightforward process for you to handle. Start by creating context around what's happening and write it down. Create a file and even a folder, and for extra caution, put it on a disk drive instead of your hard drive. Next, describe the process you've used to resolve the conflict. Well, you have all of that right here in this video. Then summarize the outcome, what worked, what didn't, 
add detailed feedback from your supervisor or skip level, and then recommended improvements. From there, you can submit it, probably to HR. But before you do that last step, let's talk about why that may not be enough or it may not get you anywhere. Unless this turns into persistent harassment, sexual harassment, or bias that's illegal, and your boss agrees with you, you're going to have a hard time submitting complaints about each person who persistently disagrees with you. Your boss or anyone on the leadership team is looking to see how you handle disagreement and conflict. Really strong leaders deal with problems. They make hard decisions and they take a stand that supports the business. Knowing how the documentation works and preparing your case for why persistent conflict affects the morale culture and engagement for the business will go a long way in positioning you as a thoughtful leader who knows when to hold boundaries and when to draw the line at toxic behavior that hurts the business. And with this toolkit, you'll be that leader. On a final note, this is the end of the first six months of coaching videos that are intended to help you develop your executive presence while you navigate the workplace as you build your career. We started with how to develop your leadership skills by looking inward and then moved into how to develop the people around you, meaning how you can help them understand what you need to succeed. Heading into the second half of the year, we're going to talk about how to develop your leadership skills as you start to figure out where you want to go next. And by the end of the year, I'm going to cover what it looks like to contribute to the business with an eye for strategy and business development. You know, next level leadership. <laughs> Let me know in the comments what you think about the material so far. I'd love to know. All right, so that's it for my video on how to build a conflict resolution toolkit for yourself. If you have examples for how you dealt with conflict at work, feel free to share them in the comments below. I would love to hear about them. And if you enjoyed watching this video and you found it helpful, please make sure to give it a big thumbs up by hitting that like button and make sure you're subscribed to my channel so you never miss another video from me. Next month, we're talking about effective decision-making as you start to make your mark as an effective leader. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.